Hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, as always, Jen Liddy. And today I'm talking about one of my favorite nerdiest topics, email, but I've got a different take on it today. And I've got an expert that I met in a group that I'm in. And I'm so excited to introduce you to Dr. Toyan Ali here. Anyway, Doyen is a mathematics professor and an entrepreneur. And I love talking to people who manage to do two things at once. I just can barely get over the finish line every day doing one thing. And so people who can like do these multiple things, I'm always fascinated. And what Toyan does is she runs two brands. She has the Academic Society, where that's all about helping grad students with time management and productivity. Um, and then she's a business, she's got a business consultancy. And there she helps professors and academics who I love this reliably build a reliably profitable business that they can operate on five hours a week or less. And, uh, first of all, the fact that you're doing both of those is, is kind of mind blowing to me. Um, I don't know if you know, I used to be a high school teacher and a college professor. And so I can't imagine doing anything else on top of that. So God bless you. God bless these professors who want to do more. And they're probably very lucky to have you in their corner. So thanks for being on today, Torian. Thank you so much. I just have to say, it does seem like I'm doing a lot, but I do everything like very strategically. I'm a like very efficient person. Yes. And that is why I think this conversation is going to be so useful for my audience today. So my audience is usually, they're usually solopreneurs. They're experts in their field. Um, they are usually service-based providers and they think in ideas and eth the ethers. Um, they have a million ideas. It's hard for them to harness their ideas, which is why I think today when we talk about evergreen newsletters, why this is going to be so perfect for them, because it's a way for them to harness their brilliance without that like churn, churn, churn that can sometimes burn them out from doing content. So thank you for being here. Oh yeah. Thank you for having me. And I do, even though I'm very efficient, I do have a bunch of ideas and want to start a new business every day. I will say the one thing that keeps me from kind of like jumping on every little idea I have is I actually like take the time, sit down, I actually map out mm. all of my ideas and then just save it in a corner for mm. another day. Yes. And I think I was actually watching a conversation happen online today I'm uh, listening to a summit that's happening right now. And in the Facebook group, there's people talking about all of the ideas that are being generated by them just listening to the summer, summit. And they're like, one woman said, I just take the ideas and I put them in my little book and I know they're for me later. And the other woman said, that would never work for me. I'm just going to spin myself into oblivion. And I was like, no, take her advice, Matt, put it down someplace, map it out. <laughs> because oh, why spin out if you don't have to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about what this notion of evergreen newsletters is. I'm really excited to hear about this because I got onto this list one time by this really pretty famous writer and her emails are just those kind of emails you want to like, like sop up, like they're just delicious. And, um, I got to the end, I guess I got to the end of her evergreen series and I didn't hear from her for a while. So I had emailed her customer service people. And I was like, maybe I fell off the list, but I'm not getting these emails anymore. And they were like, no, you just got to the end of the evergreen newsletter sequence. And I was like, what the hell is this? So I, when I met you and you were like, this is what I can talk about on your podcast. I'm like, please enlighten me. What is an evergreen newsletter? Oh my gosh. It's the best thing ever. It's so helpful for, for someone like me who's like doing a bunch of other things. Okay. It's a way that you can stay top of mind with your audience without having to create the content in real time okay. every single week. So an evergreen newsletter is very much like a welcome sequence that just goes on for a long time. It can <laughs> okay. go on for three months, six months a year. And when I was first building my very first evergreen newsletter, I had a very small um, email list and I was like sending an email to maybe like 10 people. And I was like, oh, this email is so good. So good. And like when someone new joins my list, they just missed out on the email. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing is every time I wrote an email that I just loved, I added it to my evergreen newsletter. And so no matter when people join me, they're able to see like my best stuff, like consistently. Oh, I love that. This is, so this is an incredibly simple concept that I have overcomplicated in my mind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> okay, we're done with the 
I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here I have a bunch of questions, of course. Yes. Um, first of all, I love that you love your content because I think a lot of times people come to me and they're like, this is just man, my content's crappy, but like, you've got good content. Like there's good shit in there, right? Oh yeah. So good. Especially like when you're very passionate about mm. what you're talking about. Sometimes I think I'm just going to write something really quick and it's like thousands of words. I'm just like, oh, this is very long. Maybe this is a two-parter, but I just have so much to say about my topic. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's that's my first thing. I love that you love your content. The second thing is acknowledging that when you send an email, it goes out into the ethers, you send it once, maybe you turn it into a blog post so it lives someplace else, but all of those new people never got to enjoy it. So right. What are we going to do about that? Yeah. So what kind of person, like where are they in their journey that starting to use an evergreen newsletter would be a smart move for them? I would say probably at any stage, but definitely if you're at the very beginning okay. or if you have been doing it for a while and you got a lot of content banked up. So okay. at the very beginning, it can feel very disheartening to write emails to maybe five people and like, and one like of pouring your, your heart out like this is so good i'm so excited to talk about it and wonderful my mom and my grandma and my two friends are on my email list great 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 <laughs> but then down the road once you start to build up an audience and more people join you it starts to feel like oh well i've already talked about this stuff before maybe yeah. you don't feel as motivated to write about the stuff you've talked about at the beginning mm saving the emails you write at the beginning and adding them to your evergreen newsletter is very helpful because you get to repurpose all of that juice and excitement that you have in the beginning. And so when new people join you and they join your evergreen newsletter, they're just like getting the very like refreshed version of you versus the one that's like burnt out later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the version of you later has probably moved on from the initial pain points that you started talking about. And so maybe you don't circle back around to those as much, but those people, especially if they come in using your lead magnet, they've still got, they're still on their, they're at the beginning of their customer journey. You've got to meet them where they are. Yes. And another thing, even if you do like pivot and maybe you like refine what you're saying and you get more, um, you get more nuanced exactly and you get more specific about who you're talking to and what the problem is those emails are saved in the sequence you can go back and tweak little things in your evergreen newsletter like you get all the stats like you do with any email you mm -hmm. can figure out the open rate the click-through rate and if you see that like an email in your evergreen newsletter like maybe that open rate is lower. Maybe you tweak the subject line. Right. Or maybe you tweak the call to action if the clicks aren't coming. And so you can always go back and you're not just starting from scratch. And I would also say for the people who have been creating content for a very long time, oh, it's so easy to set up your evergreen newsletter because you have so much backlog. Like you got your Instagram posts, you got your videos, you got the podcast you've been like interviewed on. You've got your own podcast if you have one. You have old emails saved in your like ConvertKit account from two years ago. Just throw them in the evergreen newsletter and you can actually be strategic about it. So I have like this whole like Google Doc where how is this how I create my own evergreen newsletter? I like think about who the newsletter is for. It might not even be for my whole audience. Maybe it's a specific subset of the audience. And then I think about, okay, what's the purpose of this newsletter? And I think about what offers I have that these people might be interested in. And then when I'm collecting all of my, I call it collateral. So this is like all the past content I've created. I organize it so that I kind of group it based on the offers. And so I can give all this like nurture and value that's related to one topic, knowing that it's going to lead to an offer. So if you have any evergreen offers, you can insert the pitch into your evergreen newsletter as well. So people are just always seeing your offers without you having to pitch it. Cause like when you kind of talk about your offers a lot, it kind of feels like, oh my gosh, people don't really care about my offers anymore. I'm talking about it. I need to add value. But mm. with an evergreen newsletter, sure, you sure. are adding the value and then you're also selling. So you get to automate your selling as well. Where does something like, um, something more timely. For example, in my business, I'm going to be sending out a survey soon because I want to know more about the people on my email list. So I'm going to be 
uh, re- it's really very timely. It's very topical. And I'm, I'm doing a giveaway along with it. Where does something that, like that work with this strategy? Yeah. So this would be like a broadcast versus like the evergreen newsletter. Oh, okay. So the, okay. the broadcast you send out at a specific time on this date, if someone joins your email list after you send it out, they don't get that email. Right. Gotcha. So you can have an evergreen newsletter and still send out weekly emails. Okay. So you can set your evergreen newsletter to go out on Tuesdays and maybe mm. you send your weekly emails on Wednesdays or Thursdays, or maybe you're not that consistent with your weekly emails. Maybe it's a monthly thing or it's but you don't have to worry about two it. weeks later you send a, or five months later, but your people are still hearing from you weekly because of your evergreen news. So it's kind of like yeah. a backup plan in case yeah. you can't send Get an it email together. Every week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many emails do you have in your evergreen sequence right now? I'm curious. Mm, that's a great question. So I'm building a new one. I okay. currently have, uh, maybe 10 right now. And the one I just started a couple months ago. Okay. But in my other business, the one I've had for a couple of years, I am not sure about the number of emails, but it goes on for about four months. Okay. And then what happens at the end of four months? Yeah. So it depends. So I kind of weave in different things. So (laughs) sometimes I'll do like a little cash injection. So Mm -hmm. I have a book, I have an ebook that I wrote. Well, you can also buy the hard copy, but one day I was like really excited to like talk about my books. I put together some testimonials and I wrote like a three email sequence on, um, what people have gotten out of the book and why it's so important to read it, things like that. And I did like a little discount on a Mm -hmm. timer and it went over really well. And I was like, Oh, I'll just add this. So I, after my, yeah, added it to my evergreen sequence. So I just add other sequences at the end of it as well. Um, convert kit makes it really easy with their like visual automations. You're like, okay, after they get through this sequence, put them in the next one. Oh, nice. Continue to add emails to them. Nice. I also love, you kind of glossed over this, but you dropped a gem. Um, the calls to action are not always buy my thing. And it's not always value, 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 how to, how to, how to. There's, here's a podcast I guessed it on. Here's my podcast. Here's a video I did. Here's an old Instagram post you might love. Like there's, I, I find this with my my private clients is they they, if they're not selling, they don't know what to do for a calls to action. And so what I'm hearing you say is like, basically make a list of all the content collateral that you have and get creative about what that word means to you. Exactly. Yes. Oh yeah. Like in my collateral, I have like um, Instagram posts, YouTube videos, podcast episodes I've been invited on, um, like, um, maybe old webinars I've done, just like so much stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's so much. Yeah. So your first business was the business working as, um, kind of like a guide or facilitator for grad students. Yes. I help grad students. Um, I help them, um, incoming grad students. I help them understand what to expect in grad school, oh, yeah. but I also help current grad students with like time management productivity. So I have Mm -hmm. programs around that, um, an accountability program, templates, things like that. Okay. Do you consider yourself a coach there? No, I'm, I consider myself more of a, uh, digital products creator. Maybe. Yeah. I don't do any coaching there, but I do sell like, uh, online courses and other digital products. Oh, cool. Okay. I totally thought you had a coaching business with them. So How do you work with grad students then? Yeah. So I can tell you about one of my programs. It's called Focus. It is a productivity and accountability program because one of their big issues is they have a lot to do and sometimes they don't feel motivated. They procrastinate and they just really need someone to help them. Like, how do I actually sit down and get work done? Yeah. And so I have a framework around it, but also it's very much a community involved program. So Mm. it's mostly hosted in this Facebook group. So they have their own private Facebook group where I'm in there automatic posts, um, automated posts every week where I ask, yeah, (laughs) what are your top three goals for the week? And I'll come back in and check in on you at the end of the week. And at the end of the week, I ask, how did you do on these goals? And also we have a 24 seven co-working space, which is just a zoom room that's open. They have the password. 
Mm-hmm. So they go in the group. So it's run by them, really. Yeah. So they go into the group and say, hey, you guys, I'm working from one to five. Anyone want to join me? And so they'll join each other in the co-working space. And then once a month, we have these planning sessions where we go through my project management framework. So it sounds like entrepreneurs could use that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you could just open up another you know, another Olive Garden right next door to Olive Garden. And you can, my husband and I, we're like, we, every time we drive by Olive Garden, it is packed to the gills. I'm like, they should just open up a, a second or Chick-fil-A. They should open up another Chick-fil-A. Uh, but it sounds like you could open up another Chick-fil-A next to Chick-fil-A. I think entrepreneurs need exactly what you've got. Yeah. Well, there's an idea if anyone wants to take it and run with it. <laughs> Okay. So to get back to, so when, so you are selling, so you're sending your evergreen emails to your grad students Mm -hmm. and then you've got this other side business working with entrepreneurs too. Correct. Correct. As a strategist. Yes. And I'm currently building my evergreen newsletter for Mm -hmm. them. So the thing, I think the thing that's scary about it is when you hear it's a six month long sequence, (laughs) it feels like you have to make it all at once. Yeah. You don't. I I recommend if you're going to do weekly, you can start with five emails, get the first five written, and then that gives you five weeks to write. You just have to be like, you just have to be ahead of that first person who's going to get to the end of that five weeks. Exactly. Exactly. And ConvertKit now has a setting where even if they do get to the end, they'll hold them there. And if I write a new email, they'll send them the next email, which is so nice. I didn't know I could do that before. So yeah, so I started with the first five and then I wrote a few more. So I'm about maybe two weeks ahead of them now. So I'll probably write a couple more. So I would say like every month I'll sit down and write like three emails to like add to the newsletter. I love this idea so much, especially because I've been creating content since like 2016 or so. And I have like, there's some gems in there and they just have never seen the light of day. They would definitely need to be tweaked, updated. But this gets me thinking about your content that you've created for your grad students. I'm wondering, can any of that be tweaked for your entrepreneurs? For sure. For sure. Like the piece around like managing your time and doing multiple things at once, they definitely need that. Um, It would definitely need to be tweaked because I I do specifically talk to grad students. Um, But yeah, everything I do involves like time management and productivity. That's just like who I am. Yeah, Yeah, I'm so, I'm all about the efficiency, the strategy, optimizing time, working, Mm -hmm. using your strengths. So have you done like the strengths finder? I haven't, but I did the disc. You and I are both C's, I think, right? Like that's the consistency. Yes, yes. Constant. Yes. Well, I think, or like conscientious or something like that. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yes, conscientious. Well, in Strengths Finder, my top strength is maximizer, which means I am not interested in getting better at things that I'm not good at. I'm Uh, only interested in getting better at the things I'm already good at. Mm -hmm. So I don't even, I have like blind blinders on to the stuff that's like not my strength. Mm -hmm. I just get better and better at the stuff I'm already good at. I love this. I think that must be me too, because I wind up taking courses and shit I'm already kind of good at, and I just get a little bit better at (laughs) it and better at it. I'm like, why am I doing this? I need to learn other stuff. (laughs) I love it. I love learning. So I'm like always trying to get better at the stuff I'm already good at. Is there anything that, um, like in your first go around with the Evergreen newsletter, is there anything that you were like, oh, I wish I had done this, or if I had to give somebody a piece of advice or something to avoid, it would be that? Yeah, I would say going in with a plan. So Mm. the first go round, I've since shuffled things around, but with my first Evergreen newsletter for my um, grad students, it was just, I wrote an email, I added it to the newsletter. I wrote an email, I added it to the newsletter. And every now and then maybe I'll do like a cash injection or like a mini launch or something. And then I'll add it to the newsletter. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really have a nice flow. Mm. The sequencing wasn't quite right. It was just a random hodgepodge of content. Yeah. Now with this newer um, uh, Evergreen newsletter I'm creating, I'm being way more intentional about it. I'm thinking about exactly what my offers are. I'm thinking about the customer journey. I'm thinking about what do they need to hear? What would be helpful at this point? Matching up the offers with the content, things like that. So strategy would be my piece of advice. When I think about somebody who's 
either just beginning in their business, they might not have the clarity that you have, right? Like they might not quite know all the answers to what is the customer journey? What are my offers? But I want to encourage people, and I think you would agree with me, not to avoid doing this evergreen model just because you don't have it all figured out. Like you can go back later and reshuffle. Oh yeah. You can always change it at any time. Yeah. And I think if I had if I had had the presence of mind to do this, or I even understood this was a thing, I could have been reusing my content in so many ways and and not feeling like I always need to keep up with a weekly email. I love this idea so, so much. It's especially important for people who get their clients because of their email. It took me mm. a while to figure this out. Um, when I was doing like my grad school stuff, like going all in, I started in like 2017. I would do a YouTube video and then I would write an email about it. And then I would talk about it on like Instagram and Facebook. And so I was kind of doing all of these things until one day I was like, you know what? Is all of this really being like an efficient use of my time? So I tracked for a whole year. I tracked all of my stats. I tracked where people were coming from, how many views I got on certain things. And the overwhelming thing that happened was the people who purchased from me, they were on my email list or they saw my YouTube, Yeah, not my social media yep. at all. So now I don't even focus on social media. I do it when I feel like inspired to. Mm -hmm. So if you are someone who's like, social media is not really the thing for me, or I'm just not really seeing the results from it, I would spend that time working on the evergreen newsletter I and like because your newsletter is where the people are connecting with you you are singing such a beautiful song to my heart <laughs> i i can't wait to be done with the, with social media <laughs> i'm very very close <laughs> yeah I'm, i think yeah. my favorite marketing thing that i do is write my emails and in and do these podcast interviews because it it just those are the things that fill me up and i find social media depletes me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um I love this. You know how I'm thinking also, if you wanted to take this idea of evergreen content, I did an interview with uh, a woman named Deanna Seymour who does, who teaches the Instagram nine grid focus. Do you know what that is? Like instead of, it's it like for the, for the, on your Instagram kind of like homepage where you, your bio is and everything, those top nine grids that you can, that time nine grid, you can see you have evergreen content there. So if somebody's coming to look for you and maybe you're only doing reels or you're doing stories, but you're not like churning out on that scroll anymore, this would be a great thing to put on your nine grid to like to go back through your meatiest, most, you know, awesome emails and kind of extrapolate it for the Instagram nine grid if you really wanted to. Oh yeah. I love that. I, I think I have heard of that, but I've heard of that with highlights, like using your highlights oh, yes. is kind of like Almost like your navigation bar for your yeah, um, yeah, Instagram. Yeah. But yeah, I love the idea of the nine grid. Like if you're like, okay, I should have a social media present. Let me just put these nine things up here that are, if anyone goes through these nine things, they want to work with me. Yeah. 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 So I love how we can extrapolate this idea for whatever platform you want to be on, but I especially love it for the newsletter. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have asked that would have been like that you're dying to tell me? Ooh, so one thing that I encourage people to do if you're thinking about doing an evergreen newsletter or just writing a newsletter in general and talking to your audience via email is like giving your people connection points, like okay. finding um, ways to help them connect with you as a person beyond okay. just like what you help them with. It helps, you know, build that know, like, and trust. Um, but sometimes it can be difficult to like talk about yourself. Mm. So I heard this from Meryl, um, mm -hmm. her, like, Freak Freak? yes, she said, um, what was it? Come, come up with a list of things like your credibility markers. And so I kind of think about it as what are my people going to connect with me on and what makes me credible? And mm -hmm. I just like wrote a whole list of things like the fact that, you know, I'm doing a business and being a professor. I won a teaching award. I got promoted early, just like listing all of those things. And so I have that up when I'm writing my emails. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can that. think, oh, I can like put this Pull in that. here. Yeah. So you don't forget about them. Because it's like breathing to you. You don't even think about those things. It's just like what your day, let's just your life, right? Like yeah, you don't even yeah. think about that special stuff. The other thing I could add to that is a list of personal things that are non-negotiable that you will not talk about. 
Like some people will never talk about their children. Some people will never talk about, you know, politics. Uh, and then a list of the social, th the personal things that you, that are available for public consumption and just yeah. having those really clear in front of you. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I talk, I'm, as you're talking, I'm thinking like, what do I do? And I, t I wind up talking about how I used to teach high school and college all the time. Cause it's just part of, it's part of like my DNA, mm -hmm. but it also informs how I operate in my business too. And like what I'm good at in my business. But I think until we examine it, we don't quite know that, oh, that's special and we need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. okay. So thank you for bringing that up. That was an awesome, an awesome point. Thank you. Toyin, how can people get into your world? Um, most of my people are, are entrepreneurs. So where are they going to find you? And yeah, you can find me um, on Instagram, even though I don't post that much, but you can start there at Dr. Toyin Ali. Um, I talk a lot about creating like self-hosted learning experiences. So for academics who are like teaching their classes in their universities, but they're like really called to like talk about other things that are mm -hmm. outside of the scope of their classrooms. Mm. They can create online like learning experiences that are hosted by themselves. And okay. so that's something like we in the entrepreneurship world, we know all about, totally. but for some reason, academics are not involved. I'm like you oh, are no. trained for this. Oh no, <laughs> They are and they don't even realize it. And it's kind of anathema to them because they're like, this is outside of the four walls. Like they just can't even believe that this is like possible for them. Exactly. I and love also that. talk about doing things efficiently. I talk about like a semester proof business. So like how oh, you yes. can run your business on five hours a week or less. So yeah. do you have an opt-in that people can get onto this um, evergreen newsletter of yours? Oh yeah, I do. I actually have an, Good thing these are audio listeners, right? I have uh, a special like audio guide. So you oh, can awesome. listen to it as a podcast. Oh, and, yes. And it walks through the whole like Evergreen newsletter thing. So if you awesome. want like to dive deeper into Evergreen newsletters, check out the audio podcast or the awesome. audio guide. Yeah. I will put the link to that in the show notes. Yeah, thank you. I've had, a, I have, a, I've listened to that because I had access to it. You were participating in a summit or a bundle, then I must have grabbed it then. It was for Laura Belgrave's. That's life. right. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So I've listened to it. Okay. I just want to say thank you because this was not only fun, and I think we meandered around. I hope the listeners can follow where, where I took us today. But I just love talking about this topic, and it's got me thinking about how to take all of those years of content I have and put them to use again for any new followers. So thank you, Toyin. You're awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. Anytime. Bye. Bye listeners.